All right, so we're out here. We're about eight miles offshore, and this is one of the coolest things about Seymour Maps and why it literally helps you catch more fish. So if you notice all this white, that's predominantly sand. And then you see these blue and green spots. It's color coordinated. It starts shallow and goes out to deep. Now, if you notice in this area, it's green. That's because they know that there's rocks there and they mapped it. Look how in depth and in detail the bottom is with these Seymour maps. So now all these spots like this, old timers had them and you would get lucky and run over them, like make a mark like that with your depth finder and you would maybe have that spot. But what Seymour Maps has done for everybody is literally a novice now can buy these chips and come out to these spots. And a lot of people think, well, man, now all the good spots are going to be gone. Well, in my opinion, if this spot wasn't on here and somebody came by and saw me catching fish, they're going to think, well, I'm sitting on the only spot and more than likely anchor up right up on me. Now, if they have a Seymour map, they can just zoom out and say, well, heck, right here's a good spot, right there's a good spot. Look at all this. And, and they might scatter out a little bit. So to me, I really, really find Seymour Maps to be beneficial to everybody. So when you do pull up to a spot, if you notice, this is my track. I went across it. Now I'm going to go back to it. Unfortunately for me, I've got to now rig up my rods, get my bait out. These guys are already ready to rip. Hey, can we drop our jigs? In a second. <laughs> so when I pull up here and I mark these fish again, they're immediately fishing. I then now have to get all my stuff rigged up. But when you do pull up on a spot, you need to set your drift one time and that maybe not even put baits out unless you're jigging because that's easy but the way i fish i'll pull up to a spot mark the fish i'll put it in neutral and see which way i'm going to drift and you can see that with your track i'm going to see if i'm going to drift offshore or inshore or straight north or maybe there's a south tide so there's a lot of a lot to this to what we do and if you pay attention today i'm going to try to go over details on why we use what we use and how we use it so you can see I'm pulling back up on the reef. I don't need to even look at my depth finder because this is real. Now you will notice over here in just a second, you're gonna see it start marking fish as soon as we get up here on this. We do have a barge coming our way. Big barge, look right here. See the boat? It's getting up on there. Look right here. Son. <laughs> Hong Kong. Anyhow. That just shows how accurate it is. This guy thinks he's, that we're gonna like drive in front of him, but we're not. <laughs> I mean, we're doing pretty close. I might want to bust at you, you know? <laughs> so this is a great example of why I use what I use right there. Here's the reef, here's the fish. But we did mark a bunch more fish right over here, so I'm gonna go there first. And get out of the barge's way. That barge best get out of my way. <laughs> <laughs> he might run us over though. We don't really want to get in his way. So one of the things about tracks, I know right there is where I marked the big wad of fish because I watched my track as we did it. Now watch as I do a U-turn on it. Why's this guy got to crimp our style right now? He's going right over our spot. At least we're not down tank diving. That would be scary yeah. as can be. He probably thinks we're some pirates or something. All right, we're on the fish. Y'all can drop. So I'm now completely rigged, and I want to show you something again, how I said you want to set your drift and see how you drift. So as you can see, right here is the reef. Look how we drifted off of it. Typically, we would drift right down it because this is north, and we normally have a north tide. Today, we have a west wind going this way. So I drifted off of it. So now I want to come all the way back up here and start on the west side of the reef. So I drift diagonally across it. That's why it's so important to always do that before you start fishing. So now I'm going to drive back up, drop some baits, and hopefully start catching some fish. You got color. Uh oh, head shake, head Tuna shake. fish. What? Another Tuna black fish. fin. Wow. Are you flipping that thing in here? Yep. Good job. Awesome. On the jig. Look on the that. jig. Come on, babe, step up your game. Down there. We got another black fin in the boat. Getting hot. Oh, he's he tugging. just woke up too. That's bad. 
We're about 100 feet down still. That's it, you just point and reel. Nice and steady. And we're traumatized from the, the previous shark taxing, so it's like get this fish up. Nice little blackie. Yeah. Tuna shake. Deep color. Oh, getting some color. Looking tuna esque. You got it. Looking tuna y. What do you know? Or Benita y. Oh, oh Benita y. Wait, bait. wait. What do you got, Benita? Yeah. Bait and sushi. You got it? Oh, it's a Benito. Ben oh, Benito. Oh, it's a skipjack. Yeah. Yes. Cool. I've never seen whatever the heck that is. It's a that's that an Atlantic Bonito. I've never really? seen one of them. An Atlantic Bonito. Whoa! But are they edible? They, they are, are edible. Very good. And they have kingfish a, family. They have a white flesh. Well, are you, is he hooked up too? That might be our catch and eat fish. Yeah, yeah. it is. They're really good, Gabe. So here it is. This is my first Atlantic Bonito. I have never seen one. They have gnarly, gnarly teeth. And I'm going to show you more of this back at the house. As you can see, my whale's a little bit bloody. The reason I do that, I'll put him in there and he'll be able to swim around and pump all that blood out. And once he's done, then we'll put him on ice. 